Welcome to Innovators, a series where we sit down with thought leaders in the healthcare technology space to talk about the news and trends that are impacting the industry today. My name is Justine Giancola. I'm on the corporate communications team here at Innovalon, and joining me today is Dr. Kate Eshelman, our VP of Medical Informatics. This episode is part of a mini-series where we look specifically at 2025 and what our internal thought leaders predict will be top of mind in the healthcare technology space. Today, Kate and I are going to be discussing risk and adjustment, and I've actually had the pleasure of sitting down with Kate on our Innovator series before, so thank you for being here again, Kate. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. All right, so before we get started, um, AI is something I want to hit on. You know, it's not new anymore. It's here. It's advancing healthcare every day. But let's talk a little bit about how health plans and providers can apply AI and coding and record views that are um, going to be able to ensure accurate documentation. Great question. So AI is, as we all know, it's not new. Um, and it's really good at, at some areas and, and less good at others. And this is an area where AI can really shine. Um, medical record reviews, the way that physicians like myself and others chart document is often very um, complicated. So we will use wording like rule out emphysema or possibly could have diabetes. And that doesn't lend itself as easily to um, the more classic natural language processing. So there's a lot of information, even with electronic health records, that is being documented in, in just total free text, um, total non-discrete data, if you will. And where the AI technology comes in is being able to take those free text paragraphs, which are still, again, very abundant in all of the EHR documentation, and make real sense of them, knowing how physicians speak and sometimes use a lot of kind of hedging language of, of they might have this. A lot of times what we're writing is not definitive. So being able to read the document, read, the AI read the document, and make a decision, does this patient actually have diabetes or is the physician considering that they might have it? Or is the physician saying they do not have it? Uh, or is a physician saying their mother has it? All of these things can show up as what we would call a false positive, where the chart would be flagged and says, Mrs. Smith has diabetes, it's documented in her chart, but when a human actually reviews it, they say, oh no, the doctor said she does not have it, or her mother has it. And so this would be time spent by a coder reviewing a chart that didn't have anything that they needed to review. So what's exciting about AI in this context is that the AI is able to layer on top of just natural language processing, which just says diabetes, right? And tell us the context of how it's being used. And it will point the human being, the coder, to the charts that make sense for them to review. Um, and so this is a really exciting development in, in AI and something we're really excited about that we have here at Innovalon. Absolutely, and I mean, I imagine with that, there is a pretty positive ripple effect. Yeah, so the ripple effect is huge. Because these charts are so long and so bulky, they can take a long time to review. So you have two things when going on when you have good AI technology. You have the ability to skip over completely a chart. So tell a reviewer, you don't even have to look at this one. There's nothing in it of value for you. So that's saving them going through the whole long chart and reading it. Or you can have them say, we found there's something in this chart, it's on page four. Go to page four and look at that chunk of text. You can skip pages one, two, three, and five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that's really speeding up the amount of time that it takes for, for a human being to review a chart. We are never going to say um, a human being doesn't need to review it. What we are trying to do is say, this is where we think there is something, and how do we speed up the reviewer's review and, and get to that answer quickly? And so it does have a huge ripple effect, which is very exciting. Yeah, I think, I mean, the advancements that we've already seen in AI and what's to come is, is certainly very exciting. But outside of AI, let's mm -hmm. look at the future of risk adjustment. Sure. What shifts do you think that we're going to see in 2025 that's ultimately going to better serve members? So I think the biggest shift that I'm excited about is uh, the ability to get analytics like ours that say we think your patient might have diabetes into the physician's workflow, into their electronic health record, so that they have it 
in their day-to-day -day workflow, they don't have to swivel chair to some other platform to see what's going on with the patient. And the advances that we're making in that for 2025 have me by far uh, the most excited. There are a lot of other things happening in 2025. The new version 28 is now live in Medicare, which means there are less uh, conditions that are risk adjustable and, and likely be less in homes that, that are happening around a lot of conditions. So there are a lot of exciting things happen, but getting that information into the EHR and from the provider is probably the thing I'm most excited about. All right, so kind of taking it a step further and really focusing on that patient. How do you think that patient behaviors are going to evolve in 2025? Yeah, so when you think about the integration, tighter integration for companies like us into the EHRs instead of kind of being more behind the scenes, we're going to see a lot of positive impacts on the patient. We're going to see providers um, able to have a much more complete visit with the patient in that short amount of time. You don't have a lot of time with your doctor. And when we are able to pump our analytics directly into the EHR, then that time is maximized. You don't have to spend the time, you know, reviewing things with the patient that the patient thinks you should already know, and you should already know, right? Because we're helping get that information in front of the provider. So it's really going to help the patient's experience when they go to the doctor, that they're going to leave the doctor's office feeling like, wow, we actually got it all accomplished in that time. And I don't feel like I, you know, the doctor ran out of time and we didn't get to talk about everything. And that's what's really exciting about what we do at Innovalon because the more we can streamline the process and get the right information in front of the provider, the better that patient doctor interaction is going to be. And we all know the members are frustrated, the physicians are frustrated about all that other administrative burden, all those other things that have to happen. And we are really doing great work to make that experience what it used to be, which was time with your physician to hear what they have to say, to listen, and to make a plan and to really keep your health going. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I mean, that example of the patient thinking that the doctor should already know whatever that information is, the number of times I've been in that seat thinking, how, how, why are we having to waste time talking about this? You should know this. So, yep. yeah, um, definitely some very exciting stuff to come in 2025 and will be interesting to see how it all comes together. So, um, Kate, I really appreciate you sitting down with us again and taking sure. the time to share this insight. Thanks. I'm always happy to help and uh, join you. Thank you. Yep. And of course, to our audience, thank you for tuning in and be sure to check out our other episodes of our Trends and Predictions miniseries.